Hey, it's Tom and Mike from Take Time to Travel. We went on a fall getaway to Mont Tremblant, Quebec and explored the beautiful pedestrian village. We tried lots of its amazing food, including authentic raclette cheese imported from Savoy, some over-the-top crepes, and of course, some tasty sweets. We also checked out some of Mont Tremblant's gorgeous hiking trails, took a stunning fall cruise of Lake Tremblant, and more. So without further ado, let's check it out. Mont Tremblant Pedestrian Village is located right at the bottom of one of the main ski runs, and it's lined with beautiful and colorful buildings filled with hotels, shops, and restaurants. It's quite a picturesque little village, but it can get pretty busy on the weekends, so if you want to eat at a restaurant, like we did, then make sure to make a reservation in advance. The first restaurant that we're going to show you is called Chou Gras Brasserie Culinaire, and it's located inside the Fairmont Hotel. We walk through the lobby of the hotel with the roaring fireplace and the beautiful stone interior over towards the restaurant. Opened in 2017, Chou Gras Brasserie Culinaire offers French cuisine in its modern new retro decor and has amazing views overlooking the village of Tremblant as well as the ski slopes. We really enjoyed being sat down next to the fireplace and being able to enjoy the great views of the sunset over the colorful rooftops of the village. Tom started with a Coors Light, which was nice and cold. And I had a mojito, which was very tasty. We shared the beef tatar with artichoke cream to start. It was phenomenal. For the main course, Tom had the pan-seared salmon with smoked olive tapenade, nant curate puree, asparagus, cherry tomatoes, and mushrooms. I had the grilled veal chop with fingerling potatoes, asparagus, corn, cherry tomatoes, and veal jus. The grilled veal chop was excellent, as was the seared salmon. Then, for dessert, I had the creme brulee sugar pie with maple cotton candy, which was extraordinary. And Tom had the choux gras puff pastry, garnished with milk chocolate mousse, apricot, and cranberry compote, which was also very tasty. But, I think mine was better. <laughs> After that lovely meal, it's time for us to get a little bit of exercise and explore some more of Mont Tremblant's pedestrian village before we try some more of its tasty food. The pedestrian village is very charming. There are so many beautiful buildings. I love all the different colored roofs in this pretty little square. Right in the corner of the square is another great restaurant called Cheeses. We made our way inside to try some of the gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches that Cheeses has to offer. I started with my favorite, a can of Diet Coke. And Tom started with his favorite, a hot cup of coffee with cream and sweetener. For breakfast, I had the Power Mom grilled cheese with griffin raclette cheese, prosciutto, arugula and pear on house-made sourdough bread. And Tom had the Big Boy with strong cheddar cheese, a breakfast patty, tomato, and a fried egg on house-made bread. The Power Mom grilled cheese was enormous, and it was legitimately one of the best grilled cheeses I have ever had in my entire life. For a side dish for the grilled cheese, I got some of their piping hot homemade smoked tomato soup. In my opinion, the grilled cheese tastes even better when dipped in the tomato soup. Mmm. Now that's some tasty comfort food. Just around the corner on Chemin de Kandahar is another place for great Canadian comfort food called Cue de Castor. They serve beaver tails, which are essentially fried dough pastries, individually hand-stretched to resemble beaver tails and topped with your choice of toppings. Mike ordered us a couple beaver tails that sounded really tasty. Then we waited for a couple minutes for our beaver tails to be done. Nice catch there. Before we walked over to find a spot to eat our tasty treats. Okay. 
so here we got the avalanche one with a cheesecake filling and score on top. Yeah. And then the other one we got here is the tarte au pomme. So there's like apple pieces and apple crumble on top. Oh my god, that looks so good. Yeah, can't <laughs> wait. We've never actually tried beaver tails before since they're so touristy. So it was surprising to find out that they tasted phenomenal. Both of ours tasted amazing, and we would definitely recommend them both. After that tasty sweet treat, it's time for us to walk off a few calories and explore some more of Mont Tremblant's pedestrian village. Chemin de Kandahar is lined with lots of restaurants, boutiques, shops, and it's also quite photogenic. Just off Chemin de Kandahar is this neat little parquet area lined with more colorful buildings. It's a nice little spot to relax or to take some great pictures, but we're going to keep going and check out where we're having dinner tonight while it's still light out. While we were in Mont Tremblant, we had to try Restaurant La Savoy. It's a traditional Swiss eatery serving fondue and raclette in this quaint little cottage here. Since we had a reservation at 8.30 p.m., we came back to the restaurant at night while it was dark and all the hanging string lights were on. Very pretty. Let's head inside and get some food. Here's a look at their menu. There isn't too many options, but everything looks delicious. There's traditional raclette, savoyard, cheese fondue, and a table grill. There's also some other options like red wine fondue and oil fondue. It was pretty dark in there, so we had to use a flashlight on our phone. But I think you can see the giant piece of traditional raclette cheese wheel imported from Savoy. It comes with some assorted charcuterie, as well as unlimited boiled potatoes and all-you-can-eat green salad. But the best part is unlimited raclette cheese. If you can finish the wheel, they'll bring you some more. We got our plates ready while we waited for the heater to melt the cheese. It didn't take long for the raw milk raclette cheese to start to melt. As it melts, you're supposed to take the back of your knife and gently run it down the cheese to get the cheese on the plate below. Wow, doesn't that look good? Next, you take the melted cheese and put it on top of the food on your plate. Then, it's time to enjoy the delicious raclette cheese. Mmm, my mouth is watering. I love how they leave the wheel of cheese at your table and you can keep going back and scraping off some more cheese as many times as you like. What a cool experience! After that lovely meal, it's time to walk the village a little bit more. Whether it's a nice sunny day or a little cloudy, it's really nice to walk around Mont Tremblant's pedestrian village. On one of those cloudy days, we walk through the resort village to another one of Mont Tremblant's amazing restaurants. This time, we're going to have some brunch. Saturday morning in Tremblant was pretty busy, so we had to get in line in order to get on the waiting list for this place called La Maison de la Crêpe, which is located in this beautiful red roof building here. Once our name was called, we went to the host and then we followed him inside to try some of the amazing crepes that Maison de la Crêpe has to offer. Inside isn't too big, but it's warm rustic style with all the wood is quite cozy. Tom started his meal with one of his favorite drinks, a Bloody Caesar, which he quite enjoyed. I had the Mautant Claudette crepe with chicken, arugula pesto, sun-dried tomatoes, cheddar, mushrooms, and bechamel sauce. And Tom had La Fiesta crepe with panko-crusted chicken, barbecue sauce, arugula, pico de gallo, and guacamole. The Fiesta crepe tasted amazing, as was the Mautant Claudette crepe with bechamel sauce. After that delicious meal, it's time for us to head out to see what else there is to do in Mont Tremblant. Now, if you're looking for something free to do, you should try the Cabriolet Mountain Cable Car, which gives you great views of Mont Tremblant Pedestrian Village and the surrounding area. It's located right at the base of the village, and if you come on the weekend, you should expect a pretty big line. 
Since Tom isn't a fan of heights, he didn't want to do the cable car, but he did wait in line with me while we enjoyed the nice views of the fountain and the waterfall. Now, the line looks pretty big, but it actually moves quite fast. In no time at all, I was up at the front. Then it was time for me to walk into my own private car. It doesn't take long for the cable car to get moving along. It's so cool how you start the scenic ride by going over the waterfalls and the fountain. Very pretty. The whole ride isn't very long. It's a little under two minutes in total. But during the whole way, you get some pretty great views of the pedestrian village and the surrounding area. It's really neat how the cable car goes right through the gap that they left in the roof of this hotel. And while you're up here, you get even more spectacular views of the mountain. Love all the fall colors all over the mountains. And how when you look down, you can even see some people enjoying the pool. What a great way to see the pedestrian village on a beautiful fall day like today. After that lovely little ride, it's time for me to get off so that I can explore some more of beautiful Mont Tremblant. This time on a bigger cable car. After the automatic doors opened, I walked off and made my way over to the base of the mountain. Now, the mountain looks pretty big here, but you can't see most of it. You can either hike up the mountain, which we're not going to do today, or you can take the panoramic gondola. To take the gondola over there, you have to purchase tickets online or at the ticket office there, which is a little bit more expensive. After you get your ticket, you get in line and then you get onto the panoramic gondola. Then the gondola takes you up the 875 meter tall Mont Tremblant. During the whole ride, you get spectacular views of the surrounding nature, the trees, the rock face, some hiking trails, and even some of the ski trails. It's really a very beautiful experience. Fun fact, Mont Tremblant ski area covers 305 hectares and includes 102 ski trails on four distinct slopes. No wonder they call this the panoramic gondola. What incredible views! Then, once you get to the top, you get some even more phenomenal vistas. Wow, what a view! Mont Tremblant also has lots of beautiful hiking trails to check out. Like this one here, located right beside the main ski hill that goes into the village. It's a little bit rocky and has some stairs. But it's definitely worth it to see this beautiful waterfall. Wow, look at how tall it is. What a great way to start our hike. We definitely didn't expect to see this. As we kept going along on our hike, we came across this wooden bridge over top of this gently flowing stream. Very pretty. As we walked along the trail, there were times when it was quite rocky and there were times when it was relatively flat. But during the whole walk, there were lots of opportunities to see amazing views and there were lots of great spots to take a picture. Wow, stunning. As we kept hiking up the mountain, we got to see some beautiful fall colors of the trees. I love all these vibrant fall colors. I think this is the best time of year to go for a hike. We kept hiking along the trail and got to this lookout point, which has some spectacular views over Lake Tremblant. On a separate hike in Tremblant, we even got to see a couple of deer up close and personal. I can't believe how close they let us get. That's the closest we've ever been to a deer before. There are lots of amazing hiking trails right beside the ski trails in Mont Tremblant. On the main ski hill that goes right into the village, there's this giant red chair, which is a great spot for pictures. After I jumped up, it was time for Mike to give it a try. He sure does make it look easy. 
it's time for a quick selfie. Before we start our long walk down the mountain, over towards the village and Lac Tremblant. We noticed some people as we walked further down the mountain and we saw this cool track. We stopped to watch some luge racing for a bit and saw the drivers drive down a 1.4 kilometer long track on a three-wheel cart through 24 twists and turns. That sure does look like fun. If you're looking for more activities to do, make sure to check out Lake Tremblant which is located just a short five minute walk from the pedestrian village and has some spectacular views. There are lots of different activities that you can do on Lac Tremblant. You can go jet skiing, flyboarding, canoeing, kayaking, or even swimming. But it's a bit cold in October, so we're going to do a different leisurely activity on the water. We're going to go for a nice fall boat cruise. Before we even started the fall cruise on Lac Tremblant, we got to enjoy some spectacular sights of the sailboats in the harbour, as well as Mont Tremblant in the distance. That's the boat we'll be taking there called Le Grand Manitou 2. The captain gave a quick speech and told us to get in line, so we did just that. After a short wait, it was time to hop aboard, then show proof of payment. For those of you wondering, it was $26.50 per person plus tax. Then we sat down and waited for people to board. It didn't take long for everyone to board and for the boat to take off. We headed past all the docks filled with sailboats to start our approximately one hour long autumn boat cruise. You could see all of the different kinds of boats moored out in the lake while the staff gave a safety presentation. On the other side, you could also see some sailboats moored out in the lake too. Very neat. For the entire boat cruise, we got absolutely stunning views of the fall colors of Mont Tremblant and the surrounding mountains. Wow, gorgeous. Since we weren't driving, we each had a nice cold one. Cheers. And they were pretty cheap at $6.25 each, including tax. The boat ride was an amazing experience we love seeing the fall colors from the water, but it's time for us to head back to the pier. After that lovely boat cruise, we headed across the road to check out Chute de la Riviere de Diable, or Devil's River Falls. Wow, incroyable! On the other side of Lac Tremblant, right beside the village is Hotel Quintessence and Restaurant La Quintessence which is apparently rated as a four diamond restaurant by CAA and AAA and is located in this beautiful building here. It serves delicious food with Laurentian flavors and French influences and features the finest ingredients from local producers. We came back at night for our dinner reservation. Wow, doesn't it look pretty all lit up? Let's head inside and check it out. Right when you walk inside, you step into the hotel's lobby, which looks pretty grand. And the restaurant is just down this winding staircase here. But first, we had a quick look at the back terrace, which had some pretty great views of Lake Tremblant. It sure would be picturesque to stay at this hotel here. Okay, let's head inside, through the hotel's lobby, past this nice little lounge area, down the winding staircase and over to Restaurant La Quintessence. I started with a Corona Extra, and Tom had a Bud Light. For the appetizer, we shared the prosciutto asparagus with the super light and fluffy cheese in the middle. For the main dish, I had my favorite, the pan-seared scalp plate, which was exceptional. And Tom had the asparagus and mushroom risotto with extra lobster, which was also amazing. Then, to finish off the lovely meal, we shared the apple tart tatin with vanilla ice cream, as well as a couple macarons, one pistachio flavored and one caramel. Overall, we really enjoyed our meal at restaurant La Quintessence, as well as all of the other food that we tried in this video. We really enjoyed this fall adventure exploring Mont Tremblant's pedestrian village, as well as Lac Tremblant. There's so much to see, do, and eat. If you're looking for what to do in Mont Tremblant, then hopefully you've got some good recommendations. 
As always, we really enjoyed making today's video. And who wouldn't in a beautiful setting like Mont Tremblant, Quebec? And we hope you enjoyed watching it too. If you did, we'd really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on our future videos. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm and it helps our channel to grow. And remember, take time to travel. Catch you on the next one.